It looks like the edge of the world. This is one of the most remote corners of the planet. But these forests are home to a wealth of wildlife. The Far East is Russia's largest region, one third of the country's territory. And with nearly 10% of the world's forests, it plays a crucial role in stabilizing the world's climate. These forests are a valuable source of wood in high demand on the international market. That's why a vibrant forest sector is crucial for this region's economy and for the global trade in wood products. For those who live here, the forests are a source of fuel, food, medicine and water. And livelihoods. The sale of handicrafts, mushrooms, medicinal plants and unique fruits at the local market provides a regular and dependable income. We produce all these products ourselves. We have used them for ages. They feed and heal us. This is the only source of income for us. But these vital forest resources are at risk. Large-scale illegal logging is destroying the ecosystem, with dire consequences for rural communities. Beekeeper Vitaly Pavlovich left his city and moved here 20 years ago. The sale of honey and forest products has always given him a small but steady income. That could all change. They have logged everything. There is still cedar left, but they log it too. There are no acorns this year. They log oak too. It's very bad for the animals. There are clear guidelines for the sustainable management of forests, but they are frequently ignored. Director of Hunting Association Orlinuye, Sergei Vobli, explains the consequences of illegal logging in the region. Why do we have such devastating floods? Because there isn't a sufficient density of trees and shrubs to hold back this mass of water that pours from the sky. It's illegal sites like these that are at the heart of the criminal logging trade. The best trees, mainly oak, were cut down for export. At this point, we can forget about the development of the forest industry, at least based on these species. It has to stop. Otherwise, we will lose habitat for tigers, let alone the resource base for companies that want to do business legally. Despite the prevalence of roundwood exports, there are successful examples of companies in the region that have managed to develop the integrated value-added production based on sustainable forest management principles. The Ternelius company employs more than 3,000 people in the region. It makes a variety of products for traditional Japanese housing and laminated panels for decoration. It has its own seaport to export directly to China, South Korea, and Japan. Another big problem in the sector is making sure low-quality wood and waste products are used to their full potential. Hernalius managed to put wood waste to use in heating the plant and nearby homes. The company also has plans to use it to fuel a new turbine generator. This generator will have enough capacity to provide electricity not only for our company, but also for the whole village. And a thriving forest sector needs a qualified workforce. Not easy to find here when the whole rural sector is in decline. However, the Primorskaya State Academy of Agriculture makes a lot of effort to motivate students and has at last obtained a model forest plot. Students finally have the opportunity to learn skills in sustainable forest management. 
To teach someone math, it would be enough to have a pen and a piece of paper. To teach someone music, it would be enough to have a piano and a musical staff. To teach someone forest management, it's necessary to have at least a small forest to show in practice how to do it. Unfortunately, it was not easy to get hold of this forest. It took us three years to convince the local authorities that we need this land, that we have no self-interest in it, that it serves the public interest to have a qualified workforce. Despite the difficulties in the forest sector, many students feel a very strong connection to the forest and are convinced that their career choice was not by chance. My grandfather played a major role in my upbringing. All his life he worked in the forest, from his early childhood to very old age. He was engaged in beekeeping. When I was a kid, he told me stories about forests. I was fascinated by them. The older I got, the more I wanted to follow in my grandfather's footsteps. Now the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations have developed an investment roadmap to tackle these problems. Drawn up with local and international experts, academia, the government and NGOs, it emphasizes the important role of a stable legal environment, of investing in people, better information on forest resources, and their sustainable management. And investment in social infrastructure and roads in remote areas will serve the interests of industry and local people alike. Likewise, making proper use of low-quality wood residues and waste can create new business opportunities in the region. The situation has to change. It is crucial now to apply new management practices to the forest sector. If we don't do this, we'll lose what is left of our forests. We cannot let this happen. We have examples of good forest management in other parts of the world. Let's follow them. Today, the forest sector of the Far East faces a lot of problems. Who else, if not us, the young generation, can solve them? No one can replace us, the forest engineers.